All right, we're starting. I, uh, we got a good deal on some pork, and my wife was wanting us to, um, uh, uh, me to cook it all on the grill, and she's gonna put it up in the freezer, and we're gonna eat it uh, as it as it uh, as we need it. Let me tell you what I got here. I got three packs of center cut pork chops. Um, each one of them is about two and a half pounds, close to three pounds. The three packs of that. Got a, a pack of thin chops, a pack of uh, boneless chops, a pack of sorted chops, and then we got uh, uh, pork loin chops, center cut boneless. All right, and we got uh, 30 of them, so I'm in pork up to my neck today, so here we go. Look out here, I'm getting ready to open them up, lay them on the pans and show you how I put my uh, seasoning on these. All right, I'm going to season these center cut uh, pork chops. Got uh, uh, 24 of them, I think. Let me see, one, two. Got uh, one, two, three, four, four times four, be 16. Got 24 of them. Anyhow, they're pretty nice, pretty, pretty, a little bit thick, nice. So anyhow, I'm gonna show you how to put the, I put the seasoning on it. I poured the pepper to it a little bit. I done done the bottom stack. It's stacked plump full of the bottom of this. Anyhow, there's 24 of these uh, center cut pork chops. This is how I put the pepper to them, pepper and salt and, and the seasoning, and do at least one side of them with the seasoning. I'm putting Kansas City dry rub, sweet and spicy on. Gives it a pretty good flavor. Of course, pork's good flavor. You have got good grade stuff. These was marked down, but uh, still good grade stuff. Alrighty. That's got that. I'll show you when it gets ready to put it on the grill here in a minute. Now I'm going to season the first row of the center cut pork chops, uh, same way I did the, uh, the other ones there. These have got the bone in it, the other ones wasn't. Okay, didn't have the bone in the other uh, 24, so season the first side. Got to put the pepper to it, honey. Lord, yeah. That's the way to put the pepper to it. Let's put a little bit of salt now. Yeah. See what we got here. That salt comes out easier than that pepper does. All right, hey. Now let's try a little bit of, of, of uh, Kansas City sweet and spicy dry rub. Let's do a little bit of that. All right, now let me cover that and start all over to show you what I've done. Show you my way of doing it. All right, all right ready for another pack. See what we got right here. The center cut pork chops. Let's do this one. Sorted pork chops too. Watch me cut my set. Got a sharp knife. Gotta watch you out. Yeah, anyhow, it wasn't too bad, I don't guess. I have to kind of watch. Sharp knife. I sharpened it just a few minutes ago and it needed it. Yeah, anyhow, I got some bandages. I'll stick one on it there in a minute. I just gotta watch not get it all the meat. Don't want that to happen. Lord, no. Man, that's a big, thick piece of pork chop there. 
All right, let's see if I can get this little bit of room. I gotta get that cleaned off. Let's just put the napkin on that. Let's just see if I can maneuver any of this around. If I can get more of this in here. Quarter, quarter piece of meat. Lordy, lordy. I got one piece extra. Well, I'll leave that in a minute and do it in a minute. We'll go ahead and season this. We're going to season the next layer on uh, this one. Got two, it's just two layers of this. Got one layer of this and another layer of boneless chops. It will go on top of that. Got the other one seasoned, so we got to do some seasoning. Let's do that. Let's get this. It's, these are the thin chops right here on this uh, pan. Some of these will cook pretty quick. He's thin with them. Make good snacking food, you know. Make sandwiches and stuff out of it. We used to uh, fix it. I, I used to like my way mom fixed it. She fried them in a skillet, you know. I bake stuff in the, on the grill. My mother was a good cook. Fix the best cornbread and, and biscuits and stuff that you ever seen. Make the best chicken a dump. Oh Lord, how you miss her? It, uh, she lived to be over 92, almost uh, almost 93 years old. She died in 2017. She lived through the depression. She was born in 1925. My dad is 10 years older than her. They married uh, the year before the World War II started. I've lost all my siblings. They're all gone. I'm the last one. I was the baby of the family. My poor old mother, she loved me, and uh, she bragged on me to everybody. Uh, she'd pat me on my head or my back and say, this is my baby. I'd be 50 years old when she'd do it, you know. The last eight or 10 years, she had two strokes. And got to where she couldn't talk good, couldn't remember good. I had to take care of her because I was the last one living, me and my wife. And, it wasn't easy. I'd have, I'd have kept her if she'd lived to be 120 if I could have, could have, but this time runs out on people, you know. And the, I wish she never did live to get to see our home that we got here. And my wife's dad and mother never got to see it. They're both gone. So anyhow, we got the best place we ever had now. The Lord provided for us for that. Wasn't nothing that... Uh, We've done except for trying to give him credit for what what he's done. And I tell you, he said he'd never let your family, your children go hungry, not see the righteous forsaken or their seed to beg bread. I'm going to tell you a story about the begging bread. I was about 10 or 12 years old out playing in a yard. And... Uh, my daddy was in the house, my mom was gone to town. We lived next to the railroad track. And the train slowed down, I seen a hobo jump off of the train. And when he did, when he did, uh, he get, got in the gravel, the train was, it, it rolled him a little bit. He wiped his stuff off and he had his little stick with his bag hanging on it. And I seen him going through the no next door neighbor's uh, garden on the way down toward our house and picking onions out of the garden and was eating them. Raw onions, walking down the head of the thighs. He got down next to where I was at and I was watching him. He said, son, said, is your mother home? I need to talk to, son, talk to her. I said, no, but my daddy is. He said, well, I need to talk to him. Would you go get it? So I went and got my daddy and uh, he leaned up on the banister of the porch. Dad did said, sir, can I help you? And he said, sir, said, I've been traveling on the road a long time. He said, I'm hungry. Have you got anything that you could inspire to give me to eat? Because I'm really hungry. I've not had nothing in, in a few days. And I'm traveling on a long journey. I got to tell, I don't know why I'm telling you this, but I'm going to tell you. My daddy said, he walked down the steps, 
That's about, and it was about 75 foot from our steps out to, or 100 to the railroad track. He waved at Hobo. Uh, he said, come on over here. The Hobo come with his sick little bag uh, and the stick on his back, raggedy, you know. Uh, about the size of a Walmart bag was like a shirt or something tied in that with his belongings, I guess. And he got down there, he didn't know what to expect, I don't guess, because you meet all kinds of people in the world, you know. Daddy said, come on. And uh, he started up to walk and got to the where the uh, steps goes up to the front of the house. He said, no, come on. He said, come on around here. The concrete steps went on around the house. And came, he went to the back door. And a man stood there and Daddy told him, said, come on, come on in. He opened the screen door, and the hobo come in. Daddy pulled a chair out at the kitchen table. You can come into the kitchen through that back door. He said, sit down right here. That man sat down, and my daddy started cooking him some sandwiches out of something there, and fixing him something to eat. And he sat there and ate all he wanted. And Daddy got took a light bread bag, uh, bag and one of Bessie Ross light bread bags and made him some sandwiches and stuck them in that bag to, for him to take with him. And they talked for probably an hour. And I thought, I didn't know, you know, I was 10, 12 years old, you know. But what I didn't know, that man left there, I'll tell you just a minute, that man left there whistling, he was happy like he had a million dollars in his pocket, just with a bag, a little bag of food, and somebody treating him good. I didn't know it, but my dad told me, he said, son, I was born in 1915. The Depression hit in 1929. He said, things was hard, you couldn't find nothing to eat. You had to hunt in the woods and get your food or either go to the river and catch fish or something. You just couldn't get nothing. He said, times was hard. He said, I lived home here in West Virginia in Hobo Detroit. He said, I went out in Virginia and got, one, got on one going south and went to Georgia. And I picked peaches to make money to send back to my family, to, to, the, to my children and my wife. He said, I know what it felt like to be on a journey and not have nothing to eat. And he... Uh, 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 but I, I, my dad, it's surprising what he done. How you doing? How he treated that hobo? We didn't know. You know, they talked for probably an hour about what and all he done. I didn't pay attention to what he said. You know, but I tell you, it was just something. Anyhow, I thought I'd throw it in. I've never went hungry. And any time I thought if I, my worst enemy, I wouldn't let him want him to starve. If I had one, I don't have any enemies I know of. And another thing, I wouldn't want my worst enemy to have cancer. Cancer has been a bad thing in my family. I lost my grandmother. I lost both of my sisters, cancer. My dad, cancer. And uh, it's touched my family. It's been a hard thing, and here I am knocking on 70 years old, and I'm fairly healthy. I've got black lung for at work in coal dust and, and on the railroad in dust and stuff, but the Lord's blessed me, and I've never let anybody go hungry, and um, I've never had to go hungry, And but the Lord made a way. I mean, if I told you where this food come from, you probably wouldn't believe it, most of you. But uh, anyhow, the Lord made a way for this. And who knows, some of this life will end up in Tennessee for people to eat. We don't know. We don't got enough of it here probably to feed somebody if they want it down there. But anyhow, we're going to put some of it in the freezer. we got freezers to freeze stuff. And we had this, and I get that real hot, I'm going to throw it to it. So anyhow, I don't know why I got talking about this hobos and all that kind of stuff. But the main thing, thought is that how the Lord will feed you. He'll provide for you. And uh, back when I was younger, it seemed like I just couldn't see the forest for the trees. 
As I got older, I look at life different. And I thank God every day for every morning and every evening. Because He supplies every need if you live for Him. If, friend, if you don't live for Jesus, if you're not living for Him, give your life to Jesus. He'll take care of you. He'll bless you. you all you got to do is put your trust in Him. That's the way things are supposed to be anyhow. I know there's a lot of people watch my cooking show. I'm not no uh, pro in cooking. I like doing it. But uh, I've seen a lot of heartache through sickness in my family. And I hate cancer with a passion. I hate cancer. cancer. I've seen so much of it. My grandmother, my daddy's mother, died on the day President Kennedy got shot and killed with cancer. I mean, November 22nd, 1963, cancer started invading my family. I lost my last sister in 2015, cancer. I lost one in 2012, cancer. So uh, I'm still here. And I'm still praising the Lord. I'm still praying for my children and my grandchildren. Had two great-grandchildren born uh, the other day on the same day. Two of them from two different grandchildren of mine. So I'm blessed. And they're both of them with sons. <laughs> Hallelujah. Anyway, thank God for you. I'm just rambling. I'm going to get off of this. My nose is running. I'm bumping to your son. Probably got you all choked up. But anyhow, let's eat some pork. <laughs> hey, God bless you. I'll meet you out at the grill. All righty. Yes. I'm getting ready to preheat the, the grill. I'm cutting the gas on. All right. I'm going to preheat it on high. to about 400 or so for I'm, all three burners. All right. It won't take long for it to get up there. I'm going to get to... The, the the boneless uh, center cut pork chops now I guess got a good diet Pepsi that's the way to go all righty got the grill up to 350 we'll, we'll cut the grill down on about half now after preheating it we're going to add the uh, add the pork on here this is a center cut uh, all of them uh, Got two layers of center cut pork chops uh, seasoning. I got one just assorted pork chop issue in the fire that's different. It's got a bone in it. So here we go. Let's put on put on put on the stuff, see. Let's see what we can get on here. Won't be long. That right there is uh, center cut pork chop won't take long to cook. You just want the name of that game for that one. Got a bunch of them here. I got about three different uh uh, full burners of meat this time, so that's the way that cook's going to go, I guess. You can hear it cooking already. Eating at them poke chops. And poke chops. Lord, yeah. Do a poke chop. Do the poke chop boogie. Let's get it in the right place, what do you think? All right, that got that. Now we got it loaded. All right, dropped to 200, but that won't kill it. It'll go right back up. Let's just see what we got. Uh, it might hinder a little bit here, but it ain't gonna kill us. Starts raining, I'll go in. I'll go in and, uh, and, uh, in that house, you know, if it starts raining very much so anyhow i gotta go get my tongs i don't know why i come out here that my tongue i run off with my tongs i gotta have them that's my 
go getters, you know. I don't know what brand it is, but I like them tongs. I've got about four or five different sets, but this is a little bit, that's about the right length I need to keep me from getting burnt and so on, see. Well, anyhow, we'll do it that direction here in a minute. I say it's about time to turn them thin pork chops. Let's do it. Let's do it to what we got. Oh, Lord, yeah. Center cut pork chop. Yeah, mercy 24 of them. And a, a assorted pork chop. Had extra, you had no room to, room to put it in the other uh, pan. You know, I got three pans full of pork. A couple of them with two layers. <laughs> yeah, this was a two layer one. Uh, so I'll have uh, maybe, maybe three different things full of pork today for the grill, you know. Three, three different, I'm talking about full too, not just. I'm gonna try them one of them. <laughs> and when them get, you hear a few minutes, them gets a little bit better, a little bit browner. This old man's gonna try one of them out right there. Might try two of them out. <laughs> What's that? Hang on that. Something got on it, didn't it? All right. Hey. All righty. With all righty. And everything's better with a blue bonnet on it, too. Everything's better with a blue bonnet on it. Do 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 do. And the whole lucky strap people said they'd rather fight in the switch. <laughs> my two sisters, I was talking about having counties, both of them smoked for time age teenagers. And you couldn't get them to stop. Even after you found out they had cancer, they kept smoking. So, anyhow, I don't smoke, but I, I used to chew. And then uh, I used to smoke a little bit of cigars a few years ago, about 10 years ago. So, I don't do that no more. I just quit it all at once. So, anyhow, we got this cooking and it's rolling. Storms trying to come in, lordy, lordy, lordy. It's just a beautiful day, a little bit cooler. It's, a, it's 82, 83 degrees out here, and I just don't know. Uh, it's just such a beautiful day, you know, what can you say? So anyhow, let's let her cook. This is a pork day for me, I guess, today, my family. So I was thinking about uh, Peter, Peter was a, uh, Jewish, uh, you know, Israelites, you know, and he, back then, before the, new, before the New Testament, they weren't allowed to eat pork. He's up on a housetop praying at that time, and the Lord let the sheet angels bring the sheet down in front of him, you know, and showed him all kinds of different animals in that sheet. And, said, and he said to him, said, rise, Peter, kill and eat. And, uh, a lot so, Lord. Nothing unclean or common's ever entered into my mouth. And the Lord told him, said, Don't you call nothing common or unclean that I've made. Told him, uh, told him uh, in other words, uh, whatever you got, be happy that you got it, you know. And uh, there'd be a lot of people say, Well, I want to eat that pork. Ain't no good for you. Hey, the Lord made it. And if uh, and not only that, I like I like beef uh, probably better than I do pork. I have to confess. And I like fish probably better than I do beef. Been wanting some fresh catfish. I've not done any good catching any catfish uh, main tribe, you know, for a while. But anyhow, um, well, I had a thought there and lost it. <laughs> you ever do it? <laughs> anyway. Uh, Lord bless us with this, you know. And oh yeah, I don't know what it was. I don't know what it was now. The Lord, uh, you know, if the Lord uh, has got a cattle on a thousand hills, I'm pretty sure he owns a few uh, head of hogs too. So anyhow, I'm going to get me a little bit about a uh, pork. Because the Lord owns a cattle on a thousand hills. And over there's my deer over there. Come on, get this stuff, deer. Come on. I usually throw my apple out every so often. He comes right down here. Come on. <laughs> yeah, I feed him. He'll be down here in a minute. 
Well, anyhow, we're running about 250, 300. It won't be long, we have to take him uh, center cut chopped off. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know, it's supposed to rain. And uh, got a storm coming in up there. I'm gonna have to charge that boat up. We're thinking about going uh, fishing in the boat maybe tomorrow. Yeah, let's see what we got. Catch them back. We got us a couple of new uh, whopper floppers uh, uh, today up at uh, uh, Durham, not Durham, but Dick Sporting Goods uh, up at Beckley. So, anyhow, we're doing this grilling here, chilling and doing the grilling. Put that over there for a while. See what this looks like. Yeah, okay, whatever. Let's do a little bit of switching around here, see what it looks like. Oh, Lord, yeah. Did I turn these already? Huh? Yeah, it is. It's done paid for itself many times, this grill has. It's done paid for itself many times. This grill's a good one. No. Don't let her mess up trampoline. She can't do that. Just leave it. She don't need to do that. We'll do it when we get time. All right there. Let's get this in here. Let's get some of these in there before it get hot. All right. All right there. Let's get this in. That's all right. We're getting. We're getting we're getting them pretty good. Let's do it like this. Get them in there where the heat's at. Oh, that's a loss down to 200. It'll go back up. I'm going to turn it in the last time. Some of them I might take off. But it's getting hot right here. So this is the that one out there putting out the oil for the lead burn. It'll, it'll roast it right on down. Anyhow. We're about to, uh, just about to get done here. We're on the last turn of this uh, food. It's on here. And we're blessed to have it. Be some good eating for somebody for a few days, you know. Anyhow, we turn these over. This is the last turn. I'm gonna give one to Ben for a good check. Here you go. Here, let, let it cool off. It's get hot. Oh man, that you looks good. You can have. You can check it. It's hard. Got to cool off. You be the one that checks checks it out today. Hey, 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 salmon, Yeah, got plenty. What is uh, something else is good? Huh? Oh, it's okay. This stuff be ready. All right, hey, put it down just for a minute there, then we'll let it rip for a while. All right, well, it's down to 250, getting ready to go back up. Next time I open that up, they're taking her off. Yeah, here, here. Uh, me and Ben's trying this out, trying to piece it out. I give him a piece, he broke it in half, had missed his seat. Mmm, golly, tender. That season's just right on it. Man, I love I could eat four or five of them before we even eat dinner on one of them. Yeah. <laughs> oh, all right. Get a good look at this product. Now, right there is a piece of pork. I'm telling you. You look at that. Look at that season on it. It's just right. Mmm. -hmm. Tender. My Lord. All right, I'm gonna cut the grill down on low. Take this, uh, take what I got on here off this time. And I gotta load it again. So anyhow, let's do that. Uh, she got them little Hawaiian rose buns. Oh, I'm good at that. Speak That's some good looking pork chop now. Mm -hmm. I can eat them by the shelf, I don't need nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> Got them a little bit uh, done, something about that on her. Very tough, man. It was like a joke. Huh? That's cold. She looked at me.
<laughs> I would be, I didn't like the taste of it. I tell you what we could do, we could eat first and then put, then put the rest of that stuff on after we eat. If you want, if she wants to. We could go in there and eat first and put the rest of the stuff on after after we eat. Yeah, see, If you want to do that. Carl got a whole pan of this uh, uh, pork chop uh, center cuts out here. I'm gonna cut her down for a few minutes. We'll go ahead and eat and put the rest of it on later. Catch you inside. Come on, I'm got the, I got the camera rolling. Let's go. We're here. We're, this is the end product. I want you to take a look at this. That's pretty good. Cut pork chops, uh, slaw, uh, Hawaiian rolls, baked potatoes, sour cream, and butter. I'm just telling you, it's, it's good. good. Look at this. I want you to see. My family's what? got my family's Bless. here. I'm looking at the stuff here. Well, ben over here, he's got oh, yeah, a plate. Yeah. We'll look at that one thing. I'll for I'm telling you, the Lord's blessed us from good food. We'll say the blessing, hey? Because we do pray for over our food. Go ahead. Uh, Lord bless you, food. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you for the food you provide for us and the blessings that you give to us each day. We thank you for your mercy and grace. We, we give you all the praise and the glory, Lord, because all of our blessings come from you. We thank you for mercy, Lord. We pray that you save all the lost souls in the world, God, that don't know you. And we want to give you praise and honor. In Jesus' holy, precious name, amen. amen. And I'm going to tell you on this tape, this is, this is Tommy. I'm going to turn it around. I got an old shirt on, I wear around the house shirt and shorts and stuff. My wife, and we do the same. That's something. Let me tell you, coming up on 50 years, well, I've been married to this woman, and I wouldn't trade her for nothing. Yeah, she could, yeah. <laughs> okay. She's priceless. That's something to be proud of. I love her. We was married good. July the 12th of 1974. That's it makes 50 good. years, you know, in just a few, couple, two or three weeks now. I just thought I was so She's been a good woman. She's been a, good she's been a lot better woman than I was, man. Yeah, I tell you, raised her kids, helped raise other people's kids, too, sometimes. Done other stuff. All right. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to put the rest of these pork chops and stuff on. It's already preheated to, to 300. Well, here we go. Let's put it on here this time. Get this show on the road. See if I can't get more of them on here. Because I got a lot of pork to fix. We eat <clears throat> a little while ago. And we got all the the bonus chops uh, uh, fixed, the, the small ones, you know. So anyhow, we're working on these now. Trying to get all of them in here. I got a lot of them. All right. There's some, let me get the latest now. This thing's getting in the way. Let's do it this way. Let's do it this way. Let's just do it this way. Yeah, this doesn't like hands to get something going right there, is it? I'll tell you one thing. We'll have some pork chops look like for a few days. <laughs> Somebody be eating them. Let's see if I can get this. Uh, the layer on it. He's the kind of sick he's just. You try them too. Thicker cut. Bigger, bigger piece. Oh lord, yeah. Oh lordy. Let's just get him in there. If we can. Let's try to get one, one more here, if we can. That's about it, I guess, for this cook. See if we can get them in here where I have them all in the stove. Let's see, all right, Let's cover this back up to keep uh, any gnats or anything from getting on it. So. I don't like to cook gnats and flies. 
and I'm not seeing a whole lot around yet here anyhow so let's just see if we can't block the flies now that a knock the flies all right we got them on 300 just about or 250 it's coming up the temperature is loaded down pork chops again we'll try to get down before dark I got probably enough to load that one more time almost so got one more load on it and try to get these done so these will be cooking right here in a minute all right they me and Ben done a video on put on YouTube uh, Country Roads a few days ago just a little bit of that I guess got me and Ben picking country roads to take me home. Let's just see what we got working here. Oh Lord, yeah. Can't beat that, man. It's gonna cook this time, bro. And it's on low. I'm gonna put it on a low. It's gonna be a hot one this time. That pork's going this time. Not more fat than this uh, bunch of pork chops here this time. It's assorted is what they call it. Still some rain coming, but that ain't gonna stop me. Might have cut my phone off and uh, put the lid down on this and uh, come back out just in a minute to rain or shine. And uh, Turn this again. As soon as I get it, I got another. Uh, uh, I got another uh, enough meat again to fill this up one more time. Too. Get off of that, see what we got here. Let's cut this off and get it out of the rain. What do you think? And this will be ready to turn again. It ain't gonna be long, this will be done. Rain a little bit. We're seeing what this looks like now. It'll be long, these will be done. It might be the last turn right here. She's a good color they got. Lord, let's just fix it before it's good. Let's throw it down our letter here. Let the bar come out of it. Come and get it, fire. Far, fire, fire. Mm -hmm. Well, it's all right, I guess. You, I talk hillbilly, pop people say, my lord, that man must be a hillbilly. I am. Sure is. And uh, I had a hankering for some, um, for some um, uh, pork chops. Hankering for some pork, uh, in other words. Uh, you ever get a hanger for anything? Well, I slip on down there and do it, you know. And uh, no, most of them tell you, I'm gonna talk a little bit here, Billy Fights, if you like it. Just think about it, what I'm saying. 
hillbilly, they, they think, I mean, I'm not that far of a hillbilly, but I'm a pretty good one. <laughs> uh, something's out of the way like that deer well there, they call it over yonder, over there it is. I try to strip that tree down, see. Probably an apple tree, trying to get one off of Anyhow, he used to, when you uh, want to tell somebody, he'd be after a while when you, so be there directly, directly. <laughs> and when somebody uh, done you wrong, like you bought something, you know, and they overcharged you or whatever, or traded you a bad product, you know, for something that you had, uh, back then they called it to, you got gypped <laughs> or bamboozled. Uh, or even the word hoodwinked. Hey, people nowadays don't know what hoodwinked means. You ask kids nowadays, see what they say. They think you're crazy. <laughs> hoodwinked. Oh, Lordy. But <laughs> I feel like I've been hoodwinked at times and bamboozled. <laughs> I went to get some pop at the store the other day. I was getting low on Diet Pepsi and stuff, you know. <laughs> Big store put up with a sign, I mean, an advertisement says it was about Pepsi for $9 and something a case for 24 I went to her and there's them half cans. I ain't gonna pay 12, uh, $10 a case for a half can. <laughs> but anyhow, and then they raised that Pepsi to $12 a case. Coke products almost 14. <laughs> I, I think he's bamboozling people. Hoodwink them. Hood, hoodwink them. I mean, <laughs> it's just pitiful what they charge for stuff like that nowadays. Coffee's, uh, it's on a, you know, coffee's pretty high now. But I like coffee now. I like Colombian coffee. I'm more hardly drinking nothing else. <laughs> if I don't got nothing else in the house, I'd rather have some good coffee, you know. So, anyhow, I thought I was an idiot. It went up to about 350. Let's say we turn them one more time. Oh Lord, yeah, this, this is the last go around for this. Some of these a little bit thin, but some of them thick, so the thin ones are probably already done. Whatever happened is. I about ready to take this off anyway. It's on its last leg. I'm gonna take some of them off as soon as I get these turned. Turn that one off. I guess I had. I gotta get this up. up uh, get this one out down here. That one out there will cook better. Got more fat on it. Gotta use my head, Fred. Get on the train, man. Oh yeah, Bill. Let's do this one out here up there. Get that one warmed up a little bit. God, they don't want to burn them. Some of them I need to take off. Let's do that. Okay, let's save some. Let's take some of them off. What do you think? I think some of them are Yeah. I think some of them are really ready. I think that two is ready. I think that one. This one's ready. That one's ready. I think these two are ready. I think that one's ready. I think that one's ready. I think that one's just about ready. I don't know if that's ready or not. I think that about got burnt up. More fat on it, probably, than the rest of them. But that's a little bit hot. Just a little bit and they're all coming off. I think it's time to take the rest of them off and call this a done deal, what do you think?
And now uh, what happened to it? Had more fat on it, I guess, than the rest of them. Let them two stay on her just a hair long. I just about got them. I'm taking the rest of them off. Should be done enough. Good enough. End of that tune for that. Heard another big thing of pork chops. Let's lay this down there. Tip this off. We have enough pork chops to eat on here for a couple of weeks, bro. <coughs> if we eat them several times or whatever, it's gonna freeze. Put some of them in the freezer. So that's how this is going. Me lay this off to the side. Get this out of here. Get the rest of them on. And move my coffee. And my coffee in the way. All right, T. Let's take that off. Got a piece of steak you done out here too. I don't know why she done that. She wanted that done, so yeah, whatever. Here we go. Let's get back in the back. Didn't even put no seasoning on it. She sneaked that out here on me. So I can season it after I get it after I get it fixed, I guess. All right, T. Oh, right there, was over out there. Getting down there now. We're getting down to the heavy duty pork chops. These are the bigger ones, thicker ones. Let's we'll see what happens with this now. about time. Well, it don't take long to keep that up on there. Just let that rip. That's all of them if I can get them done. Got me some good coffee. I've got two different kinds I'd drink. Maxwell House Columbian and um, Tim Horton Stark. We use one coffee pod cooker things what we use all the time. I've got a red or coffee pod, but we've sort of got in them pods. I like them the best, I guess. Turn this one more time. All right, we got this one. Then. Might have to turn it one more time. We're getting down there where it ain't gonna take long now. If there's one pork. Pork deal today, ain't it? All right, then. I'm gonna turn it up on medium and get this cook over with. I'm in my last leg of it, anyhow. Let it run about 400. I'll turn it one more time. Leave it on there about two more minutes. And that's it. That's the way that's gonna cook today. Glad y'all stayed with me. Time to turn it the last time. That'd be it. Just long enough for it to send that other side and everything's gonna be over. Now I have a job cleaning this field like all this pork out there. Just stuck on everything. All right, there. Let's get this over here. Put this in there. All right. Got two more minutes. They'll be out of here. All right, it's time to take these off. Let's cut this down. It's flared up some, went up about 375. But these are ready. These are ready for Freddy. Piece of steak. Two. These are a little bit thick. I didn't want to get them hardly too done. That's good out right there. Now the grill's off, just oil made it kick in, so that's it, that's the name of that game. It'll die out there in a minute, and I'm gonna put the, cut the gas off now, 
and we'll call this a, a pork cook today. A pork chop day. Lord of mercy, got the pork chops. Well, well, thank you for staying with me. It's been kind of a long cooking thing because I had so much to do. I had three, three sets of uh, pork chops. It filled this grill to the to, uh, full each time, so that's a whole lot, see. After the first one, we took time to eat because we was all hungry because it was getting late in the evening. It's already 20 to 9, so. Anyhow, I beat the dark. It rained a little bit, but not enough to hurt nothing. And I'm out of here. God bless everybody. See you next time. I'm going to increase the temperature to medium uh, for the sake of uh, trying to beat this storm. <laughs> uh, it probably run up about 350. With that much greasy stuff on this time, because that's just a uh, assorted pork chop. Meant it had a lot of bone and fat in them. <laughs> yeah, whatever. But that's, that's both of these what was in that one in, in that uh, grill that time. So it'd be done for a while. It's smoking good. You're going above up to 300 right now.